Awesome. Ah, neat. Outstanding. Um, as we're welcoming in new folks, oh, hi, Anna. Nice to see you from uh, Stumptown area. As you enter in, feel free to put your name, where you're from, and a favorite production, um, performance, style, uh, song, uh, play, etc. in the sidebar. Great to have you all with us. We'll just wait a few minutes just knowing that technology takes us just a little bit of extra time. So um, waiting for a few more intros. Molly, we know you. Molly, do you want to give a little shout out? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Molly. I'm a senior at Gonzaga's. Um, I don't know if you can see the chat, those of you who are new, but I'm from Portland. And um, I wrote like my favorite production was this show called Dancing at Lunasa that I was involved in in the fall. And that was a really amazing experience. It's like an Irish play and it's a memory play. And it's just, it's very sweet and has a beautiful story. And I just love being involved with it. And I actually got to perform in the space that's the back, that Char that's Charlie's and Tim's background there, which was so incredible to be in that space. And if you all come here, which we hope you do, you could perform in that space too, which would just be ama an amazing opportunity for everyone. Awesome. Awesome. Um, for those who don't, who are just joining us and ha uh, don't have chat open, open up your chat. You'll see some prompts as we go along. It's a place you can ask some questions. Um, and you'll see that I have just added another reminder. Hey, Gabriella, where are you? Hey, nice to see you. Singer friend and, uh, and dancing friend as well, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I love choir. We're, we're so happy to have you with us. <laughs> Awesome. Oh, and it's Amelia. I recognize lots of these people. Oh, Dang. So open up your chat here. We'll start maybe in just about one or two minutes. Does that sound okay, Charlie and Suzanne? That sounds, sounds great. Great. Keep great. Yeah. We're still accumulating, folks. So toss in the sidebar your name, where you're from, and a favorite uh, production maybe that came to completion, maybe that didn't come to completion regardless, in the sidebar. We're all kind of in it together these days as musician artists musicians and artists and dancers and actors. Awesome. Got some new folks. There's Mia. All right. It told, Tim, I just love that it. it looks like you're up in the balcony. That's so fun. I know. Very and you know, realistic. The, I am on campus, everyone. I'm so happy to have my short little walk um, to and from campus. And you know, what's great about Zoom is that you can easily jump to another part of the building. So here I am up at the balcony and looking down at the performance oh, no. tree. I can go see what the dancers are doing in the recital hall, you know? <laughs> Good times, good times. And if I want to pretend I'm the conductor, because, you know, I do that <laughs> on occasion, here we go. All right. So um, we'll just let one more person come in there, Mara, and then we'll start up. So um, we, um, this is the gathering of uh, music, uh, the departments of music and the Department of Theater and Dance, and a chance to learn about the program offerings um, and we'll give a brief overview in each of the three areas and then have time for some questions. We've got six Gonzaga reps here to host and uh, address your questions um, as we go along. So um, we'll just do quick intros and then dig in. My name is Tim Westerhouse. I serve as the chair of Gonzaga's music department. Um, and then my teaching role is I um, am the director of the choral ensemble program here. I'm Charlie Pepitone. I'm chair of theater and dance, and um, I'm really happy to meet you all. So uh, thanks for making the time. And, if, and I'm Suzanne Oster-Smith, the director of the dance program, and it's fun to see more faces coming and joining us. We've just started with some introductions, but before we go into each of our slideshows, we'll introduce again. So you haven't missed anything. We've also got a couple student ambassadors, students who work with admissions and reaching out. We'll invite them to give a little introduction as well as our, our admissions um, representative. Yeah, okay, I'll start. Um, my name is Kendra Brislon. I'm a freshman at Gonzaga. I'm a music education major with a choral emphasis and I am involved in Gonzaga's concert choir and chamber choir. And I'm Molly. I am a senior at Gonzaga and I'm from Portland, Oregon. And I'm studying international relations and political science, which doesn't really sound like I should be here, but that's a wonderful thing about the Gonzaga Department of Theater and Dance, as well as the music department. But 
you can be involved in any kind of show as a as in the theater department without a major or a minor which is really exciting love that opportunity and it's something i'm really passionate about telling a lot of people about because it's a population that i represent so and i love theater and Molly can tell you, I constantly think she's a major. So she has it's to true. remind me, actually, political science. <laughs> yeah. Because she's so involved. <laughs> exactly. So anyone can be involved. Even if you're, if you're majoring in math, you can still do theater and dance and music at Gonzaga, which is something I just absolutely love about our departments here. Uh, all right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us. My name is Becky. I'm one of our admission counselors here at Gonzaga. Um, I'm also a Gonzaga alum. I graduated last year. Um, I was not formally involved in the arts, which honestly is one of my regrets from college, uh, but I was a dancer my whole life, um, was on dance team at Gonzaga and took a couple um, dance classes while I was a student, but I'm just here to help field questions to our experts, but thanks for joining us. Um, I'm going to start with a brief overview of music. As we do this, I'm going to be sharing my screen. And so when it enters into share screen mode, if your chat uh, doesn't open up automatically, scroll up with your cursor to the top and you can click under the more options chat. Please um, ask your questions as we go along the way. We won't get to them right at that moment, but we will at the end when we have a chance to read them all. So I'm going to share screen. And for those who have just joined, toss your name, where you're from. Um, in the sidebar. So I am in a photo inside the Merle Wilson Performing Arts Center. And you can see this is our beautiful new uh, facility where music, theater, and dance come together for some incredible artistry. Um, specifically with the music department, um, it's truly a place for every single musician and more than just a place to perform, yes, it's a place to pursue our passions, to lead, to innovate, to compose, to create music anew, and to create our community transform our communities and the world. Um, we really at Gonzaga um, thrive on um, the uh, sense of community, pursuing excellence and creativity, but always in the sense within the context of a supportive community. So what, who is this community? Um, over 850 students every single semester are in ensembles, lessons, and classes each semester. So there are opportunities for majors and minors, of course, but also for non-majors, for students from every single discipline, from engineering to nursing, all across uh, the university. We're comprised of 34 faculty who are truly committed, whether in lessons or in the classes, to mentoring you. Um, our focus as a liberal arts school is you, our undergraduate students. Um, you'll see us um, not just in the Myrtle Wilson Performing Arts Center, but in five different buildings. Um, and some of the things that are just really important for students are plenty of practice rooms with lots of new uh, Boston Steinway design pianos, a music tech lab, and other facilities. So what does pursuing your major, uh, uh, your, your passion for music at Gonzaga look like? Um, of course, we have a really comprehensive music major program in several different areas. Kendra introduced herself as a music education major. She's uh, just about to finish her first year in that degree program. So we do full certification for high school teachers, um, for middle school teachers, for elementary school teachers, K-12. We also offer a BA in music with uh, five different concentrations. Those who are interested in performance, those interested in composition, those interested in just music in a general sense or a research sense. Recently, we've added a sacred music degree and our jazz studies um, degree will be um, in play uh, starting in 2021. So an option for you as incoming students. Um, students often ask with majors, is it possible to double major? And the answer is, especially for the BA in music, absolutely. It's designed to be a major that um, can be done with uh, another one in tandem and still finishing in four years. The one where it's not as possible is music education. Our music minor is newly revised, offering more flexible options. And this is news, I think, probably even to Kendra as one of our music students. Um, our new, uh, more flexible music minor allows for lots of different concentrations. Of course, um, being involved with lessons and ensembles, but a lot of flexibility so you can pursue a, a track that's focused in performance, composition, in jazz, in voice, in music history, in theory. We also offer for all of our majors um, a minor in conducting, which gets our students in with our ensembles. 
which leads us to our wide variety of ensembles. So I'm just going to go briefly through an overview. Even if you're not in one of these, you might be collaborating with one in one of the other arts. It's one of the hallmarks of our uh, program here. Our symphony orchestra, you can see on the left there, 60 to 80 members. It rehearses just once a week in the evenings for two and a half hours. Uh, similar with our wind ensemble, about 60 to 7 all students in that wind, brass, and percussion ensemble. A guitar ensemble does music from flamenco to um, classical Latin American music. Uh, newly created is a creative music lab ensemble, which all of our majors participate, but is also open to other students. And that's uh, an ensemble um, fully devoted to the creation of new music or recently composed music. So students do a lot of the composition in that actual ensemble themselves. Um, in addition to our percussion ensemble, the drumline um, uh, meets particularly in the fall for, of course, the Gonzaga Bulldog Band. This is um, our athletic band uh, that uh, plays for women's and men's basketball games. It's the, our, one of our ensembles that tours every spring to Las Vegas for the West Coast Conference Tournament. It's uh, over 100 students um, every single year. Um, yeah. Um, the director of the Bulldog Band is also the director of our jazz program. And we've got a full um, set of jazz ensembles, both one and two for big band ensembles. One of you mentioned that you, your favorite performance this year was seeing the Pixar performance at the Spokane Symphony. Well, we've got a tradition too where we put video with jazz every Christmas, doing a Charlie Brown Christmas with jazz combo, as well as music like Duke Ellington's Nutcracker Suite. Um, in addition, we have four or more small jazz combos. Some are just instrumental, some include vocalists. Speaking of vocalists, in my role of director of choirs, I oversee four choral ensembles and traditions span from our fall family weekend performances, our candlelight Christmas performances, uh, performances that focus on social justice issues, and also masterworks with professional orchestra. I'm just going to pop up our four choral ensembles quickly. You'll see that they meet for a variety of times. One of the frequent questions we get from students who aren't music majors are, is it possible for me to do this in the midst of a busy nursing schedule, engineering, um, uh, pre-law? And it absolutely is. And the reason we have multiple ensembles is that they have different time commitments. Some of them tour or concert choir touring annually every year, either to Portland, as Anna knows, um, or uh, Seattle. Our chamber chorus tours internationally every other year. Uh, past performances have included Colombia, South America, um, Zambia and Zimbabwe. Um, last year with dance to Florence on a wonderful collaboration. And our plan, Corona permitting, is that we'll be in spring 2021 touring to South Korea. Lessons are open to all students. You don't have to be a major at Gonzaga. Many students take them if they're a minor or even if they're a non-major and just want to explore um, uh, their instrument deep, more deeply. If you wanted to always play guitar, if you've always wanted to play the piano uh, or sing and you feel like you're a beginner at any of those, we've got group classes that are an opportunity for you to enter into that an entry point in. In addition to all the performing elements, um, we have a wide variety of academic music classes. These ones that you can see right now fulfill uh, courses in the core. So if you're not a music major or minor, um, these are courses that are all, uh, open to you, a, a fairly wide variety. And then a whole bunch of additional courses that you don't necessarily need to be a music major to take. One of the hallmarks um, uh, recently is that we've created um, residencies every single year um, and sometimes multiple. Um, just as a highlight, um, this last year we had the, uh, the choral activist Melissa Dunphy come in for um, uh, several days with us. And in just a moment, I'm going to invite maybe Kendra to share one note or two if you want to unmute yourself. But we bring in professional, active composers, musicians to work with our students and bring music alive. This was in celebration of 100 years of women's right to vote. Kendra, a highlight you want to share? Oh my gosh, she was the coolest person I have ever met. Oh my gosh, she is amazing. We got to listen to a colloquium of hers where she shared her inspirations behind why she composes. And as 
like someone that's interested in music I've thought about composing but I'm always like oh my gosh that's that's like scary it's terrifying like I can't do that but she inspired me and plenty of other people in the room that weren't even like music majors or anything to want to just try and compose because she made us all like know that anything that we make is a gift and is music and it's beautiful and that was so cool to get to hear from someone like her. Thanks, Kendra. There's a real thing for, I think, all artists called imposter syndrome, where you feel like you're not maybe good enough, or what business do I have doing this? Melissa really helped us dig into that and break down those inhibitions uh, about that. As we look to next year, a lot of exciting plans. Our composer in residence is going to be Jocelyn Hagen with us for a week. This is a delay from this year, but we're get, the plus side is those of you who might be involved with us next year would get a chance to work with her in either our wind ensemble, in some of those open discussions with students, or in the premiere of The Notebooks of Leonardo da Vinci, uh, work that we'll be doing with choir, orchestra, and multimedia video projections. So we really prize innovation, um, collaboration, community, um, excellence and creativity in the music department and opportunities for whatever level you're at await you here. With that, I'm going to turn it on over to one of my wonderful colleagues. Excellent. All right, let me dive into a little theater here. Okay, so for all of you um, theater lovers, uh, our uh, program is really passionately uh, interested in a liberal arts bachelor's uh, degree in theater. So I talk with a lot of uh, students who are looking at programs uh, across the country. Some of them are Bachelor of Fine Arts programs. Some of them are, are bachelor's programs. Ours is very purposely a bachelor's program because we believe that uh, a firm background in the liberal arts, um, especially with Gonzaga's core, um, will steep you in history and literature and philosophy and music and sciences, and that makes you a better theater maker. So uh, we think that our students leave our program with so much um, story, so uh, a well of inspiration that then they can go on to further study uh, in a conservatory or, or a graduate program or go right into the profession uh, in the theater uh, or any number of allied fields using that, um, that degree. Theater is one of those uh, degrees that you really can do uh, anything you want with. And a bachelor's degree um, at a place like Gonzaga with our social justice mission really helps you focus your theater making on how do you make the world a better place. So our students, this is, you can see our mission statement here, um, are all about critically reflecting on a broad range of literature uh, and performing arts forms uh, and all sorts of techniques um, to give you an active engagement um, that, that tries to lean into our world and uh, tell stories that, that are critical to, to what our communities need to hear. So that makes us a little bit different, I think, than some of the theater programs that you might um, be comparing us with and looking, looking towards. We are passionate about um, developing our students into theater makers for today and for our communities. Um, and so that makes us um, really interested in creating new work. And I'll talk to that, about that in just a moment. So um, our degree options in theater, we have a theater major um, with concentrations in both design and performance. Um, we believe that as an undergraduate, um, our goal is to, to provide you a good, broad um, background in theater, but then you can also focus in performance uh, and design. Uh, we also offer secondary uh, education credentialing uh, as well. And then we also have a theater arts minor um, that gives you quite a bit of choice. Um, our major, uh, is also, like, like Tim was saying, is made to facilitate double majors. So I would say a good percentage of our uh, theater majors are also majoring in, in other fields. Um, typically, um, our students will major in broadcasting, psychology, history. We've had a theater um, criminal justice uh, double major. Um, often we have theater and dance double majors. So. Um, our participation in our classes 
uh, and, and in our majors made so that you can, you can really pull that interdisciplinary um, potential together. Um, and of course, our, our courses in that uh, degree give you a, a full scope of theater education from acting, directing, voice and movement, playwriting, all the way through scenic costume and lighting design, uh, as well as uh, stagecraft, costume construction, and allied arts. Um, so you have a good choice uh, of work. Um, and we think that our coursework really is the is the laboratory setting where you learn the skills that you need um, to be active in our production seasons. So um, all of our performance classes um, will have some sort of uh, performance at the end of it. Um, but all of the classes that you get prepare you to be um, active participants in our um, annual production season. Um, this is the show Molly was talking about. Molly was involved in this Dancing at Lunasa um, production. Um, our performance season every year, we produce two main stage theater productions um, that are directed by faculty or guest artists uh, every year um, in one of two of our spaces that I'll talk about in a moment. But one of the things that sets us apart is our priority of student-driven work. It is very rare um, to find a program that offers so much what we call second stage productions. These productions are proposed by students um, through a, a competitive process every spring. Students propose shows that they want to direct, act, uh, design, uh, and we mentor our students in, uh, in those productions. Um, and so we usually pair one to one. Um, one main stage faculty or guest artist directed production with a, a student uh, second stage production uh, every, every semester. There's so many, um, uh, so many programs that often it can be your sophomore or junior year before you're on stage. And we think that with four years as an undergraduate, you need to dive right in with both feet and get, uh, get going. So, it is not unusual for uh, first year students to dive into a faculty directed show their first semester or uh, a second stage show. Here's an example of some of the work uh, we've done in our productions. Uh, if you know some of these titles, what you'll see is a good balance of classical work. Um, we try to give students a background in Shakespeare um, at least every other year. Um, but then through over four years, we try to give students a broad uh, portfolio uh, to pull from. So in here, you'll see Jesus Christ Superstar. Suzanne directed that a few years back. Uh, Mother Courage and Her Children, Bertolt Brecht's play. Uh, but then also um, some very, very contemporary experimental works as well. So um, over the course of four years, our students get a really broad background in, in theater. Um, we, over the, since 2015, we've also been um, really interested in creating new work with our students. So in, um, since I've been, been at Gonzaga in six years, we've developed two shows um, that are physically driven, um, Weaving Our Sister's Voices and a, and a play based on Rilke's poetry. Um, and we've also created a play that is a documentary piece of theater about the experiences of veterans um, coming home from war called uh, Coming Home a Soldier's Project. And in 2021, we'll follow that up with a, an original documentary piece about going and serving um, and looking at oral histories of Peace Corps volunteers. So um, there's a lot to get involved in. That's the, the short, short way of saying it. So if you have your, your eye patches, everybody pop them on because the other thing that we're excited about is collaborations with our colleagues in music. So, uh, Gar -meaty. Gar -meaty. so uh, in the fall, we're excited to present uh, Gilbert and Sullivan's The Pirates of Penzance directed by uh, Dr. Kathleen Jeffs. Uh, in collaboration with the music department. This is going to be a giant production. 
uh, in the Myrtle Woldson Performing Arts Center. Our first uh, musical uh, in the new uh, state-of-the-art performance uh, hall there. And it, it, the, the numbers of student opportunities are, are huge for this production. So very excited about that. Uh, if you know Pirates of Penzance, the music is, is fantastic. It's a hilarious show uh, and will really showcase all of our student uh, and faculty talent. So uh, what else? Professional development. Um, we try to get our students out uh, networking with other students, their colleagues across our region. We're involved in the Kennedy Center American College Theater Festival, um, which is our region is nine Western states. Every, uh, the week of President's Day, every uh, spring, we bring together roughly 2,000 theater students from across nine states to work together in all uh, fields from acting, directing, design, uh, allied arts, presenting and performing for each other, uh, and also um, getting uh, professional feedback from professionals from around the country, and also being able to audition and interview for summer uh, employment. Uh, every year we also host professionals for master classes. Recently we've had, um, where's my list? Greg Jackson, who was in the touring um, cast of The Lion King, he played Zazu, worked with our students. Uh, Robert Post of Post Comedy Theater did a physical comedy workshop. And Mike Wiley um, was here performing his latest documentary theater um, piece and, and led us in a, a master class about creating documentary. Um, theater. So we try to get students involved with professionals uh, as often as we as we can. Here's a, another uh, Yahoo for our new Performing Arts Center, Myrtle, the Myrtle Wolfson Performing Arts Center um, that you see behind Tim that I'm just sitting out in front of is a 759 seat, uh, has a main stage Coughlin Theater, uh, and then 168 uh, dance and recital hall. Uh, dance rehearsal space and uh, recital hall. It also has a design studio um, that all of our department's design courses um, take place in. And then we also have the Magnuson Theater, which is a 218 seat uh, modified thrust, and which is a really um, wonderful place to, to work, really intimate um, and can be reconfigured uh, depending on the sort of show that we're creating. Our students also work in the box office uh, in the costume shop and the scene shop. We also have students who are working, uh, learning how to do marketing and PR for arts organizations. Um, and here's just, we get to brag a little bit about some of our, our recent graduates. Nathan there on the right is now pursuing his MFA at the, in acting at the New School in New York City. Uh, Annika is a directing casting intern at Seattle Rep. Uh, and she attended the National Theater Institute after graduating uh, from our program. And these two, uh, Elizabeth is uh, performing with the Speakeasy Dollhouse uh, in a new immersive play. She works as an actor in New York City. And then Talina, uh, so they're sort of coast to coast. Talina is in Seattle uh, working for a number of companies. Uh, and I was just talking to these two yesterday, actually, checking in with our alumni. Uh, and Talina's starting work also at a new production company, working in, um, beginning to work in the film industry. So some really uh, exciting work these, these alumni are uh, engaged in. We also have students who, um, one is beginning medical school, one's just finished law school, and we have lots of students entering secondary and, and primary education. So the possibilities of what you can do with a, with a theater degree from Gonzaga are, are pretty endless. We're excited about what they do. All right. As we shift over to dance, just because we've had a few folks join us um, since we started, feel free to, as Suzanne uh, opens up and shares her screen, open up your chat. And if you have questions along the way, feel free to post them over there. And I've shifted over into the recital hall with some dancers for Suzanne's time as well. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you for that, Tim. Thank you, Charlie. So yes, I am Suzanne Ostersmith, the director of the dance program at Gonzaga. And we have lots going on in the dance program as well um, as the other two art forms that were just talked about. 
Um, I'd like to just start by saying, you know, dance, we have many students who have danced for years and years that come to Gonzaga to pursue majors and minors and continue on with that training. But we've also had students that have never danced before or danced very little who say, you know what, I'm at Gonzaga, I'm going to give it a go. So every one of you listening today, um, listen up because I'd love to see you in a dance class at some point or another. Um, let's see, and why isn't it going? Is mine up? It is up, right? And when I hit next, sure is. It isn't going. Oh, there you there go. We go. Back, back. Woohoo! All righty. So again, um, we have a dance major with concentrations in performance and pedagogy. So pedagogy is the teaching of dance, and we have a really wonderful opportunities for our students in performance and pedagogy, as well as we're moving towards a concentration in arts administration. So stay tuned with that one. We also have a dance minor um, that pairs with any major. And just like my colleagues and their art forms, um, our dance major is truly designed to be able to be a double major. We really pride ourselves in finding ways to combine different um, fields with the field of dance. In fact, so much so that we have an interdisciplinary arts minor um, that's designed that way as well. It's the study of theater, dance, and visual arts, as well as music, and how those art forms integrating them together can actually create really creative and innovative thinkers. So lots going on in that way. Our courses, um, there's lots of them. We have a number of classes in various techniques, ballet, jazz, modern, hip hop, urban, all of that musical theater. We also have theory classes, dance history and um, composition, choreography and all of that um, as well and performance classes. Speaking of performance classes, most of our spring classes actually feed into our spring dance concert, which is one of our major concerts every year. Um, and we have a number of different ensembles, just as um, my colleagues were talking about. We have the Gonzaga Repertory Dance Company Ensemble, but then also dance um, companies and ensembles throughout the years for specific projects. For example, last year, that tour that Tim mentioned that we did together to Florence, there were specific dance ensembles that worked all year together, creating work and then took that to Italy, um, as well as our biannual musicals. So we have at least four dance concerts every semester um, and lots of ways to be involved in those projects. We're also really proud of the fact that um, at Gonzaga, we're really working towards the mission of Gonzaga and really our idea of dance as service really plays out in our programming. So we have our Dance for Parkinson's program, which is the images that you see here. Every Saturday, we have people from the community come to Gonzaga and students engage with them and dance in beautiful ways. We also have our Zag Dance program, which is a free after-school dance program. So the community gets to engage in that, but our students are the ones teaching that class. So they're taking what they learn in the classroom and applying it very directly that way. Professional development, lots of opportunities as well. We have um, dance treks specifically. We've been to Seattle to go see productions and meet with professionals in the field. We work really hard because we're tied so much to our um, alums and alums feel tied to Gonzaga that we do a lot of pairing with students, with alums, and that can be an incredible professional advancement for them. We offer master classes for the region for um, touring productions that come through. Our students have first dibs on that. As well as every summer, we have summer dance intensives and people from all over come and experience as well as study abroad, which I'll get to more later. Oh, I'm, get, I'm speaking so fast because I'm so excited for you guys all to know about this. Okay, so student leadership in dance. We also have a number of ways that students really grow as leaders. So working towards their careers, but then also developing their leadership skills. We have our dance council that really helps run so much of what happens in our dance program. We have a dance honor society and then also Boundless Dance Club because there's something about dancers you can never get enough. And Boundless was formed years ago so that even if you don't have enough credits in your schedule to take as many dance classes as you want, Boundless is led by students. They're taught by students for students and those are free and it's a lot of fun. Facilities. My dear colleagues have talked a lot about the various facilities that we have that are so wonderful, but I thought I'd um, highlight our dance studios in particular. The videos, um, I think the sound is a little funky, but at least you can see students dancing in this way. 
And where did it go? Right here. Boop. There is something incredible about the energy of a whole lot of dancers coming together in one location. It is a thrilling thing to be a part of. The richness of the creativity that ends up on the stage is really a thrill to watch. You will not be disappointed. Just a fun little blipper there to kind of see people actually dancing in the rehearsal studios. All the other images are pretty much from the stages that we use. So both the Myrtle Wilson Performing Arts Center and the Magnuson, as my colleague Charlie and Theater talked about. So again, I just want to say that combining of majors is a big part of what we do at Gonzaga. And so these are just some examples of students. Hannah Hodelik was a theater and dance uh, major, and uh, she worked has worked for years in Disney as a performing artist down there. Lindsay Gardsmo didn't graduate that long ago, but immediately got um, hired at a dance competition company in Los Angeles. She was um, also a business student, and so she works in that competition field supporting those competitions. And then Hannah Wentz is just another example, engineering major um, with dance, how do you combine those? But she found that she got jobs in engineering with Bowflex because of her knowledge of the body. Um, as I mentioned before, that pairing of students with alums is really big too. We, um, just yesterday, I was talking with a student who is now committed to being a double major in human physiology and dance and wants to be a dance physical therapist. And we have a recent graduate who is literally doing that, um, working with dance companies in Seattle. So I'm, I put them together so they can talk about what's possible um, in the career as they move forward. And then study abroad opportunities. That's a big part at Gonzaga as well. Um, for dance, we've had a number of programs. We've been to London for, and taught at one of our courses, Interdisciplinary Arts, to Florence, as mentioned, touring with the choir and then also taking classes uh, for the summer program. This summer, I was due to go to Columbia to teach in the Master's in Communication program and research for future undergraduate tours and performance down there. <sighs> but that's been put on hold. But the good news is I think it's going to happen in January so I can still do my research um, and make that happen for the future for undergraduate programs. There's real wonderful um, opportunities during the semester, but the merits of the summer is that really allows students to get ahead. And in the performing arts, then you're not missing out in any of the concerts and performances during the academic year. Um, our plan in dance is to tour and have classes um, at least every other summer in various locations. And as far as semester dance, we've had students who've taken dance classes in New Zealand and also in Madrid, Spain. Some really positive things that way. So I think I'm just about out of my time, but um, I just wanted to put up there some resource information um, because uh, dance at gonzaga.edu, easy to remember. Any questions, shoot them my way. And then also we have a number of TEDx talks um, out there from about our dance program, from interdisciplinary collaborations, as well as more details about our Zag Dance program. So just Google something like Gonzaga Dance, TEDx, and stuff will come up. So you know how to do that. Give it a go. So that's it. Do you it. I, we now are I share really quickly about um, something related to dance? Yes. So I know myself and Kendra, we are not uh, representing the dance department today, but there are so many students who are dancers who are wanting to share their experiences with you. So if you head over to the Instagram page, it's called GU Theater Dance. You can see there's like, I think there's like 30 stories right now of students sharing their experiences in the dance department and in the dance program. And I just think that's super important to note because Kendra and I can't speak to that as students, but but there are so many people who want to, and there's also an Instagram page for the dance program. So I just wanted to quickly tag on to your presentation, Suzanne, and just share that there are students who want to share their experiences with you. So head over to those Instagram pages to check that out. Awesome, thanks so much, Molly. Hoo -hoo. We've got about four or five minutes for some real-time questions. If you didn't feel like putting yours in the chat, you can do it one of two ways. You can unmute yourself and just ask the question. Um, if you open up the um, participants, um, uh, if you click participants, you can also virtually raise your hand and do that. But um, sometimes it's just easier to do this or to start talking. So feel free. We're happy to address any questions you have or comments. Go for it, Mia. 
Um, it, I don't know how much autonomy you have over this, but is there any way to create a Zemi group chat for music students so we can connect that way? That would be through our office, but I will let our staff member who runs that know. It's super easy for us to do. So yeah, Thank we can definitely do that. Thank you. Brilliant idea, Mia. Already making Gonzaga an even better place. <laughs> way to go. <laughs> And I just want to say, I am on Zemi. I'm one of the student ambassadors that's on there. So if you want to talk music or if you want to talk any arts or have any questions, I'm on there and happy to talk. Awesome. I saw a couple of questions about auditions. Right now, um, the theater uh, program does not require auditions for admission. Mm -hmm. We do um, hold auditions for all of our shows, second stage and main stage. And for those of you interested in Pirates uh, auditions, that'll be happening over Labor Day weekend right after school starts. So um, if you follow either of our departments, music or theater and dance, uh, on Facebook, you'll see some uh, announcements about that coming up. Great, and I'll just kind of say as well, as far as admission into the dance program and either the degrees, there's not currently any auditions, but the faculty really help a lot with placement into the different levels. And then we do have auditions for the various ensembles. I have a question. Uh, I guess this goes kind of for Kendra, and I know Mia asked a little bit about it in the chat, but are you planning on doing um, study abroad through your music major? So um, with, as Dr. Westerhouse kind of said, it's a little bit less flexible with music education just because it's so credit heavy with the School of Ed and the School of Music. So I am personally not planning on studying abroad. Um, my abroad plans are through chamber choir, like going to South Korea next year after the school year ends. Um, but with like the other majors, like not normally music education, it is definitely possible to be able to study abroad. And the choirs I know will welcome you back with open arms when you get back from whatever your study abroad is, of course. One of the reasons we started the intercultural exchanges, which are not just like going on a tour bus and singing in nice places, it's actually connecting with other ensembles, was for this very reason. It's hard to take off a whole semester from your instrument of study, from your music education methods or whatever performance classes. So summer is a great time and we try and keep it condensed enough though, so if you still need to work or do other activities, that that's still an option. And we do it every other year so that you, you have at least a couple opportunities throughout your four years. It's a great question, Dora. There's a question in the chat from Maddie um, about if there are any athletes who are also um, participating in performing arts. Yes, definitely. I think in all three, we've, we've definitely experienced that. Um, and I think that you know, it, it varies from project to project and class to class. But I think we've all seen that, right, guys? Absolutely. We've from had, crew to baseball to soccer, we, have, uh, we haven't yet had um, a basketball team member. But hey, there we go. <laughs> we've had a lot of interest from our soccer, our men's soccer team. Uh, and what's so interesting is they have such a team uh, feel already. They, they throw right into our collaborative efforts. It's, they do a great job. And we have a few people joining, so there are two sessions, so we're wrapping up the first one, so don't worry. We'll have another one starting in a couple minutes if you feel like you jumped in at a weird time. We're just asked, having, answering any questions at this point, if anyone else has any. Otherwise, we also know that you're going to probably hop on to another session at this time. If you missed the beginning and you want to stay for that, um, you're certainly welcome to stay. We will just kind of hang out and talk music and the arts until it's uh, in a, for another three or so minutes and we'll start up a second session then. So thank you all for joining us. Keep the questions coming. Um, but if you need to leave, feel free to do so at this time. Go Zags. Yay! Go Zags. Nice to meet you all. Show you all another view of the... I'm now up in the balcony for you all. Awesome. How about on stage? Great. Your view? Or welcome if you're staying. <laughs> Holden, yeah. it's so good to see you. This is fun. <laughs> I was like, I know that guy. <laughs> hey, I have a question actually, Kendra. Will they all have, um, are they getting somehow all of our contact information and things like that?
There is contact information on the website. I know underneath with the Zoom link for this, there's Dr. Westerhouse's information yes, there, but it is easily accessible okay. on the website, definitely. If they go to Performing Arts, it's right there. Okay. Yeah. It's under the description. It has all your emails, so. Perfect. Yep. We are welcoming a wonderful group of new students um, to this um, session. So I'm just putting in the chat, open up the chat. It's a great place to um, ask questions and you'll see a little prompt there, um, a little welcome. Uh, put your name, um, where you're from perhaps if you like, um, and maybe a favorite production, performance, style from this past year, either that you got to do or that you would have gotten to do uh, had we not been in that current situation. So as you enter that, please open up your chat and toss it in the side. We'd love to get to know a little bit about your artistic life. Um, as we, I see some wonderful friends. Hi, Sammy. Yeah. <laughs> it's really fun for me seeing um, you all together because um, for us as faculty, um, seeing the community start to form even before we're all together and seeing like I start to get to know hold and you're singing a little bit and Sammy singing and thinking oh you're gonna be friends with Kendra and part of this great community and and making great music to get on the stage with actors and dancers so good things wait we're gonna just wait about one or two minutes since this is a transition time um, but for those just joining um, you don't have to uh, have your video going but if you like we certainly would like to see you as well. Um, feel free to put um, uh, some, a favorite production or performance this past year. Um, night, thank you for Molly and Kendra, your welcomes as some of our current Zag students. Yep. Yeah, so just right there, give us, um, let us know a little bit what your interests are in that chat. It's fun to kind of know ahead of time. I'm going to put Holden and Sammy on the spot. I want to hear what you guys have been up to since I've met you guys. It's past Jan January, February. I wanted to speak. let you know on here or in the just in the chat. Either, either you can put it in the chat. Okay. Because you hear your voice though too. <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh, hi, Nia. Good to see you. <laughs> awesome. awesome. Welcome, Nia. Nia, tell us what your instrument is in the chat there. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Bummer about Chicago. Don't yeah, worry. Yeah, we, we, we've got musicals for you waiting at Gonzaga, too. <laughs> yeah, and the role of Kitty is such a mm. great one. How close were you, Anya? How close before uh, were you to, to opening? Oh, and Guys and Dolls. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. All so these. To hear about. This is sad. The arts are going to come back. Um, we're 148, and I know we are at 145 start time, so let's uh, dig in. I'm going to do a quick introduction. Um, we've got six Gonzaga um, reps, faculty, students, and admissions. Um, and then we're going to each talk about each of the areas, the music department, um, the theater and dance department, and the dance program. Um, and then have time for questions at the end. Please open your chat as you have questions along the way. Type them in there. We will respond to them as we're able. You may just have to wait until we finish chatting. Um, but my name is Tim Westerhouse. I'm so happy to see some future artistic zags uh, here in our Zoom get together. Um, I chair the music department and my faculty role is directing the choral program. Let's see if am I unmuted? Yeah, I'm Charlie Pepitone. I chair the theater and dance department and I teach uh, acting and directing and direct during our season. Wonderful to see you all. Thank you for joining us on this virtual gel. Glad you could make it. Woohoo! And I'm Suzanne Ostersmith, and I am the director of the dance program here at Gonzaga. So we'll each share a little bit about our fields together. So happy to have you here. And we've got a couple student ambassadors. I'll ask them to introduce themselves. Yeah. Hi guys, my name is Kendra Brislon. I'm a freshman at Gonzaga. I am from Vancouver, Washington. Uh, I am a music education major with a choral focus and I am in concert choir and chamber choir here. And I'm Molly Quillen. I'm from the Portland, I'm from Portland, Oregon, and I am an international relations and political science major, which I said this in the last one and it's important to like note again that it doesn't sound like I should probably be in this group because I'm not a performing arts major, but that is one of the wonderful things about the performing arts at Gonzaga. You do not have to be a major or a minor in anything related to the arts to be involved with performing arts at Gonzaga, which 
is something that like Charlie and I often talk about. He always thinks I'm a, I'm a theater major because I'm just, I'm, I feel very involved and very at home in the theater department at Gonzaga and, but I'm not a major or a minor and I've taken tons and tons of classes. So I just, I want to emphasize that it's such a welcoming place to be at Gonzaga and it's, it's quite the, honestly, it sounds really cheesy, but it's quite the family. Like we really, we know how to talk to each other in the best way to get stuff done, which is really awesome. Thanks, Molly and Kendra. We also have Becky with us from admissions. Yeah, hi everyone. Thanks for joining us. My name's Becky. I'm one of the admission counselors here at Gonzaga. I see a few of your names that I've worked with throughout the year. Um, I am a Gonzaga alum and graduated last year. I uh, sit in the last session. I was unfortunately not uh, formally in the arts when I was in college, which I do regret, um, but I was a dancer my whole life. Um, took a couple dance classes at Gonzaga. So I'm just here to help field your questions towards our experts. Thanks, Becky. In just a moment, I'm going to share my screen with you. So just quick housekeeping if you're newer to Zoom. When I share my screen, it's gonna get very large, but we want you to keep your questions coming for chat. So scroll up with your cursor and make sure that um, the chat option is open and feel free to type questions as we go along the way. If you wanna exit that full screen mode, just hit e, um, the escape key and it should be set. So you'll see behind me right now, I am across the street from this beautiful hall, the Myrtle Wilson Performing Arts Center, your future artistic home. Um, uh, so I'm gonna give a quick overview of um, the music department where truly, as Molly was saying, it's a, there's a place for every musician at every level of experience and excellence. There are opportunities for all sorts of students and I'll start with the major and minor just in brief um, uh, after I talk about our community of musicians. So each semester, over 850 students are enrolled in ensembles, in lessons, in classes of a wide variety. Um, there, so there are opportunities for students who are majors, of which we have about 30 to 40 students who are majoring in music, minors, another 30 to 40. But you can tell from those numbers, the vast majority of our students aren't majoring in music. They're pursuing their passion in ensembles or classes or lessons because they are that, passionate about music. We have 34 faculty from our applied teacher in bassoon to our orchestra faculty members to the jazz program to music education, all committed to mentoring you, our undergraduate students. As an, uh, as an undergraduate liberal arts institution, our focus is you and your time that you are here at Gonzaga. Um, in music, we don't have a graduate program, so really our focus, my focus as a faculty teacher, is you. Um, in addition to the lovely Myrtle Wilson Performing Arts Center, um, we have four other music buildings with practice rooms, with some new Boston pianos, a music technology lab, and other facilities for your creativity to come alive. There are six different majors or concentrations. Um, the first, as Kendra mentioned at the music education program, um, there's the BA in music education through which students become certified to teach at the K-12 level in 48 um, states um, with reciprocating licenses. Um, that's choral, general, and instrumental music education. Um, Rarely do students double major with that because it's a demanding music and education program. However, uh, the BA in music is definitely a possibility to double major. The concentrations include performance on all instruments and um, in voice, um, a concentration in composition, concentrations in general studies, which is a research or internship based track. Newly added is sacred music, and our jazz, concent uh, jazz concentration will be um, rolled out um, this upcoming academic year. Um, if you are wanting to pursue your passion, but also not as a major, well, we've got um, a very achievable minor that uh, includes some lessons, ensembles, um, and is newly revised with some flexibility, recognizing all the different ways that you might have your creativity come alive, whether your concentration or your track might be performance, composition, in jazz, in voice, in music history, in research, theory. And for all of our music students as well, um, they can get very easily a conducting minor. Many of our music ed students pursue that. 
We have a wide variety of instrumental ensembles from traditional to innovative, and I'll just give a quick overview. The orchestra, which you can see there um, in our new hall, is uh, 60 to 80 members that just rehearses once a week for two and a half hours. Our wind ensemble, uh, directed by Dr. Peter Hamling, also the head of the music education program, uh, is a similar large size, all students, and also re rehearses about two and a half hours each week. Um, our guitar ensemble um, plays music um, in a wide variety of styles, um, uh, from Latin American music to um, um, classical music of the European tradition, folk music as well. Our Creative Music Lab Ensemble is a new ensemble um, for music majors and students who are interested in creating new music. Fully committed to composing music, students will create their own works, um, writing for one another and other performers in this ensemble. In addition, uh, we have our percussion ensemble, which is um, often mallet instruments, marimba, xylophone, and such like that, as well as our drum line, which works in collaboration with this incredible group, our uh, Gonzaga Bulldog Band that plays for the athletic uh, teams, our women's and men's basketball teams. They tour every single year, um, and it's a limited practice commitment, um, but a really important and wonderful positive opportunity um, this director of the Bulldog Band is David Fagg, who also directs the jazz ensembles. Um, he, um, we have uh, two large big band ensembles. You can see one there. One of my favorite traditions every uh, December is going to their Christmas program. They um, play live music along with the Charlie Brown uh, cr uh, Christmas uh, show. Um, and they also do a Christmas-themed work like Duke Ellington's Nutcracker Suite. In addition uh, to the uh, large groups, we have four uh, or more, depending on the number of students, small combos. Those that can be just for instrumentalists or for vocalists. I'm stepping into my role as the director of the Choral Ensemble program. And the Choral Ensembles, there are four. They are all open to students of all majors. Yes, we have music majors and minors, but uh, the majority are not uh, majors or minors. Some of the traditions I love are our fall family weekend concerts, retreats with the various uh, choirs, candlelight Christmas, um, concerts that have particular social justice themes, and every year also collaborating with professional orchestra. The four choirs are directed by different faculty members. Um, some of them tour annually to Seattle and Portland, like a concert choir. Our Discantus Treble Choir always has an annual retreat and outreach concerts. Um, we have a historic glee club that we've revived uh, for dedicated to tenor and bass repertoire. And our chamber chorus is drawn from the concert choir. Um, and that's a group that particularly focuses on staged performances and unique collaborations, as well as international touring. Recent international tours um, in 2017 uh, was uh, Zambia and Zimbabwe. Two years before that, um, 2015, Colombia with partnering universities. As you can see here on this screen, Gonzaga students write alongside other ensembles. So rather than just experiencing other cultures from a tour bus or from a concert setting, we learn and bring music alive together. Um, uh, in 2019, I had the great pleasure of collaborating with my colleague Suzanne Oster-Smith in the dance program and touring there with a dance company and our chamber chorus. In uh, 2021, I should say, uh, corona permitting, we will be touring to South Korea. Lessons are open to all students. It's a real common question. Do you have to be a music major or minor to take lessons? The answer is no. Of course, um, they are part of the uh, music curriculum for majors and minors. Um, and you have different options for how long of lessons to take debate based on the time in your schedule and such. But it's open to all students. If you are um, a person who has wanted to dabble in guitar for the first time, or piano, or singing for the first time, we've got a great series of introductory classes called group, gu group guitar class, group piano, group voice class. And those are designed for students that are wanting to dig into this but might, maybe have not done it before. In addition to the, all the performance opportunities, which as you can tell there are many, our academic music classes um, engage with topics from world music to American music tradition that we have, jazz, um, and are incorporated into the core curriculum. 
Um, I've listed a few of the uh, courses up there for our majors and minors. Some are traditional, like music theory, music history. Others are not. We are really committed to integrating music technology in, um, for all of our current musicians. Each year we bring in one or more special guest composers um, for special projects. Um, this past February, we were able to have um, Melissa Dunphy, a choral activist composer, in with all of our students as we celebrated the 100th anniversary of women's right to vote. Um, the reason we do this is um, having a, a fresh perspective from someone performing elsewhere in the world or the country really refreshes our art. And it was a treat to have Australian Melissa Dunphy uh, with us for a few days of this choral program. Kendra, I'm going to put you on the spot. If you could share a you know, specific highlight or moment that you really enjoyed this past February with Melissa Dunphy. Yeah. So I think one of the things that was, it was such a cool opportunity to be able to sing some of her music because we learned it before she came and then we got to have her there and she provided a whole new perspective on what the meaning behind the text was in relation to the music and, and how we could portray that in an even better way. So it was really cool to be able to hear like where that emotion originated and allow her perspective to change how we saw and how we performed it as well. She encouraged all of us to become composers and talked about imposter syndrome and really helped us break down some of those creative walls. Thanks, Kendra. Um, this next year, um, one of the upsides of our uh, corona situation is that we've been able to reschedule um, the outstanding Joss, composer Jocelyn Hagen for her residency in 2021. She'll be with us for a week, collaborating with our wind ensemble in the performance of one of her works, in uh, discussions with our majors and minors, in colloquiums, sharing meals, and also performing a choral orchestral uh, new work with video productions animating the journals, the drawings, uh, the, the, uh, the written words of uh, artist Leonardo da Vinci. Lots of great things ahead await um, you at uh, Gonzaga in music. I'm going to shift over the screen share to my colleague in theater, Charlie Pepitone. As I do, I'll just remind you, please put your questions over in the sidebar. It looks like a lot of questions have been going. I'll make sure I address some of the music ones as we go. Don't be shy about those questions. Right. Thank you. And feel free to ask um, questions about any of the fields as we're presenting, because we can do that from here too. Absolutely. Uh, and Cole, I saw your question about technical theater. We'll uh, be sure to get to that. If I don't answer your question specifically, let me know so that we can we can make sure that we do. Um, our program in theater offers a bachelor's degree in theater arts, and we are passionate about our liberal arts. Uh, bachelor's program. I know a lot of um, programs you might be also looking at. Um, you might be trying to decide between do I get a BFA, do I get a BA, what's the difference, what, what's the best. Um, and if you talk to our faculty, what you'll hear is that we think that a broad liberal arts um, tradition gives you the deepest well for making theater. It gives you more story. Um, so our students study all sorts of literature and philosophy and history and music and science and all of that is pulled into their work as theater makers. Uh, and what we find is that a bachelor's degree actually gives you a much stronger platform um, as a theater maker. And especially if you're going to go on uh, to pursue uh, higher education or, or advanced degrees in theater or jumping into the profession, a liberal arts um, bachelor's in theater uh, is really a wonderful platform for your work as a theater maker. So our students um, critically reflect on this broad range of literature. And one of the things that, that Gonzaga's uh, mission offers us is a, is a real focus on how does our work as theater makers, how do, how do we as artists um, work in the world to make, to make people's lives better? How do we improve our communities? Uh, and that's one of the things we emphasize in our department in a number of ways. So our degree options, um, we have a major and a minor. Um, like uh, my colleagues in um, music and dance, our program is designed for you to be able to um, double major if you choose. A lot of our students do choose to double major um, in 
Um, some of the popular ones are double majors in theater and psychology, theater and, and broadcasting, um, theater and history. Um, we've had a theater criminal justice double major in recent years. Um, and so our program is, is really geared toward um, those sort of interdisciplinary uh, focuses. Um, we have a concentration in design, theater design, and also in theater performance. Um, coming soon is a, is a um, concentration also in arts administration. Um, and then our theater arts minor uh, requires fewer courses and gives you some choice on, on how you want to, uh, to focus your time. Um, our courses are the laboratory that build your skills in any number of ways within the theater um, field from acting and directing, voice and movement, playwriting, and all the way through scenic costume lighting design, and also the technical um, sides of theater and stagecraft, costume construction, and allied arts. Allied arts, for those who don't might not know that jargon, is all the property design, um, rigging, all of the that sort of um, field uh, in theater. And so um, we've got classes for you to take part in that. And those classes are also available to non-majors and non-minors. Um, uh, many of them also would provide uh, the core arts requirement for the uh, Gonzaga core. Um. So our performances are where all of that, those skills really come into play. Um, each year we create a full season of uh, main stage and second stage pr productions. Um, we consider our main stage, those are um, productions that are faculty uh, directed um, or guest artists directed. We had a wonderful guest artist this year, Jack Delahanty, who directed this production you're seeing, um, Dancing at Lunasa. Molly was uh, in that show, so she can tell you more about that. A really beautiful production here. Uh, in the Myrtle Wolfson uh, Performing Arts Center. Um, so we do two main stage shows, but something that really sets us apart is our second stage. Second stage is named that not because it's somehow below uh, the main stage. Second stage are all productions that are directed, designed, acted, uh, stage managed, all by students. Each spring, our students put together proposals for the shows that they would like to produce. Um, and so this is a student produced um, season of performances. Um, and so this is a really unique uh, thing for an undergraduate um, theater program to prioritize that much student driven production. Um, and over the years we've had experimental works, we've had classical works, um, and we've even had musicals all in our second stage season, designed, acted, uh, produced, uh, all by, all by students. It's a really exciting feature. Here's some of our past productions over the last, roughly about uh, the last six years. Everything from Mr. Burns, a post-electric play, which is a very contemporary piece of theater that we toured to Denver, Colorado as a part of the Kennedy Center American College Theater Festival. I'll tell you more about that uh, in a few moments. Tick, Tick, Boom, which is a musical, um, Romeo and Juliet this season, all the way through. Um, a, a host of different genres. And our goal is to provide our students with a, uh, a strong uh, portfolio for students exiting our program. Everything from new work um, to uh, musical theater, classical work, uh, the full gamut. Um, we also, we, over the last about six years, we've been developing quite a bit of new work with our students, um, whether that's devised work um, based on poetry, uh, and the team creating the, the work alongside the faculty to um, premiere works of documentary theater starting in 2018. We did a production called Coming Home, A Soldier's Project. Uh, and it was all based on oral histories of veterans coming back to our community and their stories of coming home uh, after being deployed. In uh, fall 2021, we'll initiate a new production all based on oral histories of Peace Corps volunteers uh, and why they chose to go abroad to serve. Um, and so it's a really uh, a good way to bring Gonzaga's mission uh, and our mission together to look at how can theater speak to, uh, to the world today. So eye patches on me mateys. One big thing we're excited about is our, there you go, Suzanne. In the fall, um, we're Arr. happy to announce, announce Pirates of Penzance, which will be our first uh, 
music uh, department, theater and dance department collaboration in the Myrtle Wolfson Performing Arts Center for uh, Gilbert and Sullivan's The Pirates of Penzance. This is going to be a fantastic uh, production, uh, beautiful music. It's a hilarious show um, and uh, will offer many, many opportunities for performance from uh, acting to dance to um, music. Uh, there for this, this production. So this will be um, auditioning the week of uh, Labor Day in the fall. So stay tuned for more information about that. Um, you can follow all of our departments on Facebook for um, information about those auditions. Coming very soon. Uh, we try to get our students up close and personal with working professionals in the theater uh, and also in film as often as possible. Um, so every spring semester, we bring students to participate in the Kennedy Center American College Theater Festival. Our region represents nine Western states, and it's roughly 1,500 theater students from across that region coming together. Um, it, it travels locations. Next year, we're actually hosting the conference. Um, and during that week, uh, students participate in all sorts of fields, acting, directing, design, presentations, uh, student performances, professional performances. Their work um, is responded to and critiqued by professionals. Uh, there's a whole slate of interview and audition uh, possibilities for summer employment and also graduate work um, that goes on during that festival. Um, we also offer master classes. Uh, this year alone, we've had Greg Jackson, who played Zazu in um, uh, The Lion King. Uh, work with our students. We had Robert Post of the Post Comedy Theater uh, give a physical comedy master class to our students. Um, we also had Mike Wiley, who's a, um, a, a really uh, tremendously interesting documentary theater maker, come and talk about his process of making documentary theater uh, and work with our students. And Charlie, can you tell us about what Next Step is? You have a yeah. question about that. Yeah, good question. Next Step is the um, auditions and interviews for summer employment and graduate work I was talking about. Next step happens at um, the Kennedy Center American College Theater Festival. This year, there were something like 40 um, professional companies uh, involved. And so our students were able to prepare one audition profile or one design portfolio uh, and to get that seen by um, over 40 professional companies looking, for, looking to hire summer workers. Um, and then on top of that, as part of Next Step, are um, several uh, graduate programs that are there looking. I think there were about 12 different graduate programs that were there interviewing students for um, MFA uh, and master's level work. And so our students have that access every year. Yeah, thanks for the question. So let's look at our facilities real quick. Uh, the Myrtle Wilson Performing Arts Center that you see behind Tim, and I'm sitting out here in front of, it does look quite a bit like that right now on campus. Um, it's a 759 seat main stage that you see there. It also offers 168 seat dance uh, and, and recital hall. It also is, uh, has a design studio that's a well-appointed um, design lab for our students and all of our design courses, costume and, and scenic and lighting take place in there. It is a beautiful, um, uh, facility with a working lighting lab uh, and all sorts of AV components so that our students can really practice their design work. Um, and then walk downstairs um, to the main stage where this theater is one of the most, if not the most technically uh, advanced spaces in the Northwest right now. So uh, our students work on an industry standard, leading industry standard um, performance space, which is, it's a real gift for our students. We also have the Magnuson Theater, which is a 218 seat modified thrust um, theater, very intimate. It gives us um, a real, uh, uh, a lot of versatility in how we use this performance space. Um, I love working in the Magnuson. Uh, our students also fill all of our crew positions uh, for our productions. And we also have work study positions in the box office the costume shop, the scene shop, and then uh, also in our marketing and PR uh, office. Uh, students really work working and learning on the job. We are really proud of our alumni. Recent alumni uh, are working all over the country. Just to highlight a couple, 
here on the right side of your screen and in, in tick tick boom is Nathan. He's pursuing his MFA in acting right now at the New School in New York. Uh, Annika is a directing casting intern at Seattle Rep. Uh, she also got into the prestigious National Theater Institute after she graduated uh, from our program. And then these two, um, at Talina at Center, Elizabeth on the right. Elizabeth is uh, a working actor in New York. She's working uh, with the Speakeasy Dollhouse on a new immersive show. And Talina is working in Seattle with a number of theaters. She's really making the rounds uh, working at in the professional theater scene in Seattle. Um, she also is, is starting a new position at the production company, um, beginning to work on the production side of film um, before she dives into her graduate program. So we're really proud of our alumni who take their, their training and move it straight into the professional theater. We also have students who take their training in theater and move it into medical school. I was in contact with one of our recent grads who's um, studying to be a family doc. Um, we have a, uh, a lot of students who go into primary and secondary education. Theater is one of those degrees that you can really do uh, pretty well anything you want to do with it, whether you take it into the professional theater or you take your theater collaborative creative experience and move it into other fields of study. So we're excited to uh, see you on campus. Let me know if you've got questions. I'll turn it over to Suzanne. And just a reminder, keep the questions coming as Suzanne is switching on over. Keep the questions going, chat about anything that you're hearing um, or not. Um, we'll make sure that we can address some in real time at the end as well. Time for me to shift over with Suzanne to the dance hall. And I'm back. Da, 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 da. Ah, there we are. Dance. I'm Suzanne Ostersmith and I am the director of the dance program within the theater and dance departments. And I would just say that I'm um, excited to be meeting you all in this way and excited to have you all come. Our dance program is definitely for students who've danced a lot and are, want to further their, um, their technical ability and their experience, but also for students who've maybe never danced before or haven't danced a lot. Um, there's, uh, we have a lot of students who come check out dance while they're at Gonzaga. We do, however, offer a dance major in, with concentrations in performance and pedagogy. So performance and teaching, lots of experience and opportunities with teaching dance. Um, and we do have the arts administration concentration coming. Yay, theater and dance and music, we're working on that one. We also have a dance minor that pairs with any major. And we also have the interdisciplinary arts minor, which I see a question from Mary about. How's that for timing, Mary, right? So this is the study of theater, dance, and visual arts and music, and how you can integrate those in creating art. Um, because our belief is that if you can integrate various art forms, then you can really show yourself as a creative and innovative employer. So we have many different majors um, doing the interdisciplinary arts minor because they love a lot of art forms that they maybe can't do, you know, four minors. So this is a way to incorporate things together. Um, and they are the classes from our various departments. We also have um, technique classes, of course, in ballet, jazz, modern, um, urban, hip hop, musical theater, theory classes and dance history, choreography, um, anatomy for dancers, all those kinds of courses, as well as uh, performance-based classes. And speaking of performance, we do love to perform. We have uh, many different performance opportunities throughout the year. Our spring dance classes pretty much all fold into the spring dance concert. So that's a big production for us each year. Um, but we have lots of different ensembles that you can audition for and be a part of. Gonzaga Repertory Dance Company, as well as other dance ensembles for specific projects. Um, when Tim, my colleague Tim, talked about our partnership and when we traveled to Florence together, we had multiple dance ensembles that worked together um, to open, uh, be a part of the grand opening of the Performing Arts Center, and then to take it to Florence and to Italy. Um, as well as our musicals, of course. We partner with theater um, and music in that way. We typically have about four concerts or more a season, I mean, excuse me, a semester. Um, and so lots of ways to expand your knowledge, both as a performer, but also as a choreographer, as a leader, and also be behind the scenes working technically um, in producing uh, theater and dance. 
We're really proud of the fact um, that like my colleagues, we have a real focus on service um, that is part of Gonzaga's mission. And we have ongoing programming that, are, uh, that really responds to that dance as service. Dance for Parkinson's is a class that we offer every Saturday. And we have people from the community come and engage in dance classes designed specifically for them that our students then assist with. And um, it's a real life giving experience for both our students and the community members as well as our Zag Dance program. And Zag Dance is a free after school dance program for our local elementary schools that are bused to Gonzaga. And then their teachers are Gonzaga students. So those same students that are learning about teaching in the classroom setting, then get to practice those skills in this free after school dance program called Zag Dance. Professional development, like the other fields, we have lots of ways that so we're looking at, okay, so you're majoring in dance, where um, do you wanna go with that? Um, and perhaps it's uh, through performance, perhaps it's through teaching, and perhaps it's through arts administration. But the way we get to be exposed to that is through things like our dance treks. A number of years ago, we went to Seattle um, for our dance trek and, and got to hear Misty Copeland sp speak and go to Pacific Northwest Ballet and see a number of contemporary companies and meet um, professionals in the fields. We also do a lot of pairing with alums, which I'll talk a bit about later. Um, master classes here in Spokane, we have the Traveling Broadway productions that come through and Gonzaga, our dance studio actually hosts the master classes for the region when professionals come and perform there. Um, we have summer dance intensives and study abroad, which I will talk about it in a little bit. But we really look at the whole person, right? So it is a, a love of dance, but also we have real incredible um, opportunities for leadership in dance. We have our dance council that helps promote and create a lot of our programming for the program. We have our dance honor society and the boundless dance club was created by a student years ago because um, they wanted more, even more dance. And sometimes students may not have room in their schedule to take as much dance as they want because we're obsessed with it. We love it. And so we have these student led classes that are available as well. A really strong leadership group within. So my colleagues have talked a lot about our beautiful facilities, um, the Myrtle Wilson Performing Arts Center, our theater and dance studios, and the Magnuson Theater. But this next little video I wanted to show just gives you a sense of the actual movement and using um, our rehearsal space. There is something incredible about the energy of a whole lot of dancers coming together in one location. It is a thrilling thing to be a part of. The richness of the creativity that ends up on the stage is really a thrill to watch. You will not be disappointed. And hopefully you can see that. I hear that it doesn't quite line up, but hopefully you at least got a sense of it. So our outcomes, we are as well very proud of our dancers that go off into various fields. So Hannah Hodelik um, and also Acacia Standish from a number of years ago um, pursued theater and dance at Gonzaga and then performed for Disney for many years. I actually just had the pleasure of seeing Hannah Hodelik down at Disney um, earlier this winter and seeing her perform as Ariel. It was a dream to see her. Um, we've also had students like Lindsay Gartsmo, um, she graduated last year, who then um, also studied business. And so she found the, the marriage of the two with a dance competition company in Los Angeles. So she's actually part of producing those dance competitions across the nation. Pretty amazing for her. Um, and then Hannah Wentz is a great example, engineering major um, with also her love of dance. And then she went on to get a job at Bowflex because as an engineer, because of her experience and knowledge with the body. Many more stories I could tell about that. Um, but I would say that, um, again, that pairing, if you um, are a student in the dance program and I start finding out, okay, you're a human phys and dance double major, wanna go into physical therapy, I'll pair you up with Laura Shalou, who's doing that currently in Seattle. So um, we, we all find great joy in making those connections. So the study abroad, as I mentioned, um, is, has become a big part in the dance program. It's a big part of Gonzaga um, in, in many, many ways. We traveled to London with our interdisciplinary arts class um, in 2017. Last summer um, in Florence with uh, Tim and the choir and then also teaching classes there and the, the tours and, and artistic um, engagement continued through that summer semester. 
Um, I was due to go to Columbia this uh, summer. I was teaching in the master's in communication program, but I was going to research for future undergraduate partnerships. Um, so unfortunately, that's not happening in June after all, but uh, it does look like we're going to be doing that in uh, January. So I'm excited to continue to develop those relationships down there. And there are a lot of merits to studying abroad in the summer for performing artists. Um, oftentimes you don't want to miss out on the concerts and the productions that are happening during the academic year. So studying in the summer helps you get ahead. But certainly we um, have seen, at least in dance, that students have also gone to New Zealand and to Madrid, Spain, and have been able to take dance classes there when they studied abroad during the semester. So resources, I just wanted to put this forward, please. You can get information, but remember dance at gonzaga.edu. I'm happy to answer any of your questions. Also, we have another, a number of films out um, on, the, uh, on the internet. Um, uh, TEDx talks about both interdisciplinary arts and dance as well as Zag, our Zag Dance pro program. So Google Gonzaga Dance, TEDx, you'll find all kinds of things to, to check out. So we have an opportunity for questions. I also would like to tag on to Suzanne's uh, beautiful presentation that um, they're on our Instagram right now. There are like 30 stories of different dance uh, students because Kendra and I, we're both student ambassadors, but we don't represent the dance department, unfortunately. But it's okay because on our Instagram, there are so many testimonials about everyone's experience in the dance department. And I just want to emphasize like how much of a community the dance department is. And truly every student just loves it so much. So they have so much to tell you on their Instagram and I'll, I'll write the Instagram down in the, in the chat so you can go check it out. But it's the theater and dance department Instagram. But just right now there's lots of dance testimonials. So check it out. We've got a few minutes and we do know if you're heading to another session, feel free to do so. We'll stay on and uh, would be happy if you'd rather ask your question in real time, you can unmute yourself. You can also use the virtual raising of your hand if you like. But questions for um, Charlie, Suzanne, or myself, or our wonderful students, uh, Kendra or Molly, feel free to um, unmute yourself and uh, let us know. Lily's asking a question I see in the chat about musicals we've done in the last few years. Um, a few years back, we did uh, Jesus Christ, Christ Superstar. Suzanne directed that. We've done uh, Tick, Tick, Boom, um, which is Jonathan Larson of Rent fame. It was his first uh, musical. We've uh, done a student production of the last five years uh, and Next to Normal. Uh, and then, of course, coming up in the fall, uh, we'll also be doing Pirates of Penzance. Also, when you come to Gonzaga, you can come to my office because I used to direct the musicals every other year for the last 20 years. And you can just look at the posters going up from Chicago to, you know, et cetera. <laughs> I've got a question from Rachel about studying abroad, and that is a definite common question. If you're, um, if you're not a music major or minor, students do study abroad, and I do my best to um, connect them with a the choir. We had a student studying abroad this semester in Madrid who was singing with a choir um, fully in Spanish with rehearsals and such. Um, so we hold your spot for you and have a place for you when you return. Um, for those of us, um, for those of you who are music majors, um, it's often difficult to do it during the actual year due to needing to progress in your instrument uh, study and through the curriculum. So often students will elect to do that during the summer, but definitely both are options. Can you go over the dance companies clubs a little more? You bet. So within the dance program, we have the Gonzaga Repertory Dance Company, um, as I mentioned, and then the additional ensembles. We have the Boundless Dance Club, Honors, and then also um, the Council. But I'll also tell you, oftentimes students are asking about the clubs of um, Bomb Squad and Dance Team. Those are student-run clubs. I'm the you know, faculty advisor for the dance team, and, and we have a lot of students that do both. They um, are maybe in those clubs, they perform at the games, but then they're also majoring or minoring in dance um, and are very engaged in the dance program. All of those auditions will be in September, and believe me, you'll hear all about it. <laughs> I 
Yeah, I guess I, I would just say one other thing is um, we do have a production that we now do. I keep forgetting to say this. Dance present fall where we produce professional companies um, and we've had the Gonzaga Repertory Dance Company actually dance on, on stage with them in a, a split bill. So it's a pretty special opportunity. Thank you so much, everyone, for your time. I'm excited to reconnect uh, with those of you who um, we've connected throughout the year. And man, really, we cannot wait to get back to acting together, to dancing together, to singing, to playing together. It's going to come. And, it, and we'd love to see you right up there. So come along. Uh, feel free to reach out via email. Um, uh, any questions along the way, we're happy to make this transition smooth and successful for you all. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right. Cheers. Thank you. Hey, we're excited to have you. Okay. Thank you. Big time. Thanks for stopping by, Dina. Yay. Thanks, Mary. Goodbye, Max. Well, that was fun. Yeah. That was really fun. Yeah. Max, are you sticking around? No, he just left. Yeah. Great <laughs> questions. And, uh, and every time we do these together, I just love hearing about, I pick up new nuggets about the other programs. I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the truth? Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Been emailing we hang out all the time. Time. Oh, sorry, Suzanne, what'd you say? I was sorry. I just said we should hang out all the time. You go. I ahead. know we should, we should. I miss you all. <laughs> but I've been emailing with a prospective student who's like, I, she wasn't in any of these groups, but she is interested in doing like theater at Gonzaga. And I've just been like emailing her about my experience and stuff like that. And um, I kept, I kept meaning, meaning to say this and I probably should have said it, but I always like think I was so scared freshman year to go to auditions. Like I was so terrified that I just didn't go. And I just, I regret that so much, but I still got involved. So it's okay. Yeah. And I, yeah. I should have said that, but. That's okay. what, you know, one of the reasons we've gone away from just even using the word audition, because really we don't, we don't have an audition. If you want to make music, we have a place for you. So we've just shifted to use, using the term placement. I mean, it seems a little bit like prescriptive, but it, we want to do, you know, take away that pressure. And that's why, you know, we do like the choir picnic at the all. And I know Dave does that in jazz too. It's intimidating. As friendly as the people are, I get nervous when I'm still auditioning today. Like it, so hearing those testimonials is super important and the importance of you guys being able to just give positive reassurance and support, it goes a great, it means a great deal. So you guys doing anything fun today besides this? Homework. It's a beautiful day out in Spokane. Oh, so is it? Go and enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, it is. It is a gorgeous day. I'm heading out to Liberty Lake. I'm going to go hike. Ooh. Enjoy it. Yeah, oh, we're yeah. shoes on and ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> well done. You are ready. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Kendra and Molly. Great to see you, Suzanne and Charlie. Bye. Good to see you. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Woohoo!